Hey everyone, this is Mr. Isometric and in this video we are going to talk about damped track bone constraint. So first in the scene let me have three bones. So shift A armature single bone. Now I will duplicate this bones on the Y like this and let's also have another bone on the Y on the opposite side. Now it is a good habit when you are applying constraint to know the name and the axis of the bone so let's just go into the armature properties and turn on the name and axis i will make the axis 0.5 and now while we are inside the pose mode let's select a bone and let's click on the bone constraint tab drop down this menu and add damped track bone constraint click on it and now you'll see that we have constraint on that bone now what this constraint does is whatever there is in the target it will follow that uh, or you can say it will look at it so if you are selecting a bone first you select the armature and then you select the bone itself so this is our bone now as you can see the local axis let's go into the wireframe mode now as you can see the local axis of this bone y uh, as you can see tracking axis is also Y. It is now tracking towards this bone, uh, our target. Now if I grab this, you will see that it is looking towards that bone. Nice. Now let's go ahead and select this bone. Now I want to add the same constraint on this bone. So I'll just select this bone first and then shift select this one. Now let's just type F3 and then uh, you'll see there is a copy constraint to selected bone. Let's click on that and you'll see that now this bone also has the damped track bone constraint and now it is also looking at that bone over there. Now let's look at the head and tail socket. So right now the bone number one, which is this one, it is following the head of our target bone. So let's select the bone number two and let's make it follow the tail, which is this portion, this point of our uh, target bone. So now as you can see, this one is following the tail and if I grab it, it is orbiting around the tail, tail of that bone. Now if I select this, it is orbiting around the head of that bone. Now what happens when you make them in the 50% mark which is at the center of the bone? So now as you can see, they are following that bone and it is creating some interesting results. So I don't know, in your application there might be a case where you want to make sure that this bone follows the center of your bone so you can use something like this now you can change the axis so let us say i want this bone's local x axis to follow towards our target bone then you can select the x now if i grab it you'll see that whoa that is actually really cool as you can see my bone is pointing my x-axis of the bone is pointing towards that uh, target bone now if i go ahead and change my pivot point to 3d cursor let's go to global and if i try to rotate it on the z you'll see that it is looking towards that bone continuously now this is some really interesting result um there is also one more thing after changing the axis as you can see, if I change it to Z, my Z is looking towards the target bone, my Y, and then you can also invert those axes. So now my negative X. So basically you can say that uh, the negative axes are basically facing outwards or facing away from the bone and these are facing towards the bone. So X, Y and Z facing away. Now there is also one interesting thing that you can do with it. Uh, let us remove the constraint from this bone. Let's go ahead and add a damp track bone constraint and let's make it follow this bone. So bone number one. Now let's do Alt G and Alt R. Okay. So now let's make this both Y. Both of their Y axis is facing towards each other. Now as you can see if I move this bone those two bones are pointing towards each other and they are staying in one single plane so it doesn't matter wherever I move it they are moving with it. Now I can also move this bone and that bone will stay in its place which is such a interesting result. So people use this uh, technique to create hydraulics, pistons and dampeners of spring movement like this. Now the last thing is the influence. Now influence is like on and off switch for your constraint you can also set it to 50 percent or any of the weight value if you have multiple stacks of this constraint uh, or some other constraint 
so that's how you use damp track bone constraint now in the next video we will talk about inverse kinematics now i'm making a dedicated video on inverse kinematics uh, even though i have talked about it in my another playlist of a rigging basic tutorial series uh, still i think i'll make a dedicated video on inverse kinematics and all the functionalities that it had um, so yeah now i'm talking about all of this bone constraints in my another video and all those videos are compiled in a single playlist which you can find on my youtube channel also for the notification of the future videos subscribe to the channel and bring that notification bell icon to support me like this video that motivates me to make more such videos and the most important thing hope you all learned something from this video thank you all so much for watching i'll see you in the next video bye bye